Hello, so I am today going to be trying to uh, go over how to build and set up an email campaign. Uh, I've seen a couple people's videos where they compare like different platforms like AWeber and MailChimp and Constant Contact and all that and everyone says it's easy to set up and uh, you know they'll do reviews but this one I kind of wanted to jump into actually building an email um, for about a little over a year I was developing emails so I know a little bit about the inner workings of emails and the hardest part about emails is trying to get them to be compatible with all types of devices like iPhones Android and desktop um, because all those different uh, devices have also different services so like on an Android phone you'll have a Gmail app uh, maybe a Yahoo app or Outlook app or just the phone's mail app that's built in same with iPhone you can have a email look different on the built-in iPhone mail app or Gmail or Yahoo or Outlook um, and then same with desktop there's Outlook 365 the web version or Outlook um, the desktop version or you know if you're looking at Gmail if you're looking at your message on Firefox if you're looking at your message on Chrome so uh, there are certain ways um, so just jumping right into it the first and easiest way to do it is um, so I've started working with a company called Paramount Pipelining Products and I do all kinds of different marketing things for them, but I'm building an email campaign for them. And they have their customers that buy their products and then they wanted some emails as well. So I started developing emails for them. Uh, the Paramount Pipelining products, they're, we're using Wix to build the website and that's one of the easier ways to build an email, uh, build a website and an email campaign but you kind of don't have as much freedom with developing it as much as possible so i wanted to go from just a simple email build this is one of the more simple email builds um you know it, it's basically one column uh you don't get to do too much with you know you can add two columns like this down here but you can't edit it as much as you would like and you don't get as much freedom to build. Now this email that I built for um, their client, they have a WordPress site, but I used, uh, I helped them set up a couple programs and that's what I wanted to go through. I helped them set up an AWeber account. I helped them set up uh, an email scrubbing list account and I helped them set up a email builder account and I'll put all those links into this email but I just wanted to give an overview before I get into it because it's gonna probably take a long time building emails like this that are cross-platform and everything it's very um, technical sometimes it can get very technical and as well there are a few skills that you need to in order to make an email look nice like this is the one that I did here and I tried to make it look you know as nice and appealing as possible to someone just getting an email from these guys so uh, first things first I'm going to try and find the message that I sent that has all of the uh, links that I'm going to be sharing in this so in order to set it up um, I'm using Aweber Stripo and Zero Bounds and what I'll tell you is the um, the way to set up an email account for email management uh, to help code them to be cross-platform. This Stripo email builder um, will help you take an eight-hour job and turn it into a two, three-hour job uh, because it helps you build in buttons that are Outlook compatible and uh, it does different versions. It helps you build mobile and um, desktop versions very easily. It has all the coding inside of it. Um, and then especially using Aweber, I've used a bunch of different email platforms. I said email sending platform here, but it's an email service provider. Um, and I've used, uh, you know, like high road solutions or 
Blackbaud or, you know, a lot of fundraising platforms to help develop and send emails to and from. And uh, so this one has pretty much a lot of the things without going into reviews of what the different email service providers have. This one allows you to do everything that you'll need to do. Plus it is AMP compatible, AMP ready. So as soon as you're ready to send AMP emails, um, you can look into that more. But what that does is it makes your emails dynamic. It makes it so you can put contact forms inside of the email so people don't have to uh, leave your email to sign up for like um, and something that you're selling and it allows accordions and uh, you can insert um, what are they called the carousel images so you can have an image that actually has a carousel image inside of an email so I'm going to be going through these three things and uh, how I got them set up so first uh, let me see. Is this the right one? Sure. So first off, I built a landing page on their website. I started a subdomain for all the emails to go through. So when you send out an email, you can either have people go straight to your website or you can build a landing page. They used WordPress, so I was able to get into their hosting and build a subdomain where I can have something that's separate from their actual website, which is this is what their actual website looks like. So some of the links I have going here, but most of the links I have going to um, this little simple landing page and without getting into too much detail, what I did on their landing page was I did the no headers and footers and just did a one column thing where I added um, a menu bar. So basically this is their website. It's just with no headers, no footers and all these little custom sections here. And then they wanted to use a embed a smart sheet portal inside of their landing page that has links to all their stuff so that they could kind of do their little bit of web design and change things up if they need to like change videos or anything without having to know how to go in and edit WordPress. So that's what I did there, linking it to that. Um, with AWeber, oh, let me get this link again. Um, annually, they had about 700 some subscribers, so they paid the 314 a year. But AWeber has a, I, I don't know if it's like a monthly or two months free trial. So you could actually sign up, see if you like it or not. Or you can pay 19 or $29 a month for, uh, you know, depending on how many subscribers your list has. Um, so that's the first platform that, you know, you want to get signed up with. The second one is this builder called Stripo. And I love using Stripo um, because I've tried a bunch of different email builders. But one of the greatest things about this that I'll show you, um, here you can see that it's validated to build AMP emails. It gives you the option to actually build AMP ready emails. And it has tons of email templates. Um, the company I used to work for, we had designers that would design emails and I would use Stripe to build those custom, you know, they, they used uh, like Photoshop and um, I forget what the other platform is that they use, but it's one of the most popular ones where you can build apps and uh, emails inside of it. You can look at uh, building email and app designs. It'll probably show up somewhere on here. If I can't find it in one second, I'll... Building app designs.
Okay, well, I can't figure out what it's called, but it's a it's a design program where you can uh, build and design all of your emails and uh, share them. So it's kind of like Photoshop. Anyways, so they would build the emails and I would use this to develop the emails. Um, one of the best parts about this is, so this is the email that I was building here and I'll just go through a little, uh, what this does is it automatically sets up like media queries and, and everything like that. So what I'm getting at is this first email that was sent here, it looks okay, but it does not look great on mobile devices. Like you don't get the opportunity to build um, mobile and desktop versions. With Stripo, it allows you to take things like this and it will automatically adjust like the padding on this button for mobile to make it larger for mobile. And it will automatically take things that are two columns and put them into stacked columns and same thing with this three column area down here. Uh, it'll stack those as well. And you can set this uh, yourself as well. Like I could come on here and say, I want this to only show up on a mobile device. So I can say, I can hide this element on desktop so that it only shows up on mobile. And that's what I used to do. I would have two versions of some types of things where I would take something, duplicate it, make one show up on mobile, and I'll show you what that looks like right now. So I'll just duplicate this. Um, and I would set this one to show on desktop. So this is the desktop to not show on desktop. I'm going to set this to not show on mobile. It's a little bit backwards. So hiding this element, hiding it on mobile, this is the desktop version. And if I want to do a hiding on mo hiding on desktop version, so this one is hide on mobile. So that means this is the desktop version. So I want to do a mobile version. I'm going to hide on desktop and this will be my mobile version. I could take this and rearrange it so that uh, maybe these pictures are a little bit larger or uh, something like that. Like uh, to show you what I mean, let me just open up this. Uh, example here of one of the latest emails that I did would be nope not that one No, nope, that's not a good example. Sorry about that. Let me find a better one. All right, so this is perfect here. Let me open this up. So uh, before I go into that, the best part about this, like I said, it helps you set everything up the way that you would like it to be, and it provides all the code. Um, you can also set uh, an email subject and export it directly to uh, tons of other email service providers, and they keep adding more and more. And you can save it as a PDF here, apparently, if, if you would like to. Um, so if you use one of these other ones, most of them are very good in here. Um, so yeah, I can use this, but I usually just export to HTML. And once I export the HTML, I'll use, this is a free program here. It's a Microsoft program called Visual Studio. And um, 
Let me see here. So in Visual Studio, what you can see is I downloaded this little thing called Preview. Um, I think it's called Preview. It's called HTML Preview by George Oliveira. Oliveira. So once you get this, if you install that plugin, you'll be able to see a live preview, kind of just like Dreamweaver. Uh, I just like this one better. It's a little bit easier to see and use. Like I can see all the different projects I have open on the side, as opposed to Dreamweaver where you got, if you have a, tons of different files open, they're all along the top. So what I'm talking about is an item like this. This is a not a finalized email here, but this section here, this is the desktop version. If I squeeze this over, you'll see it pops into a mobile picture. So when I built this in uh, Stripo, I had uh, that's the desktop and that's the mobile. So I turned that section off for desktop and turn this one on for mobile and then on this one I turned this off for mobile and had it show only on desktop so small things like that make it a lot easier to use Stripo and I didn't use Stripo forever I just I use it in the beginning to get comfortable and, and build like all the CSS and help me uh, do a lot of that because buttons uh, trying to get buttons to be compatible mostly with Outlook uh, programs uh, like the Microsoft programs those were one of the hardest things to uh, keep straight so that goes through Stripo the other service that I recommend is called Zero Bounce because um, <clears throat> Uh, let me pull it up so you can see it. So, Zero Bounce is an email validation service. So, even if you do get all your subscribers, um, a lot of subscribers may sign up for things with fake emails and stuff like that. So, uh, some people buy purchase lists, and you're not allowed to buy use purchase lists on Aweber. There's a number of people services that have purchase lists but if you go to say like a trade show or you do some type of contest and you get a large email list using something like zero bounce i think we spent 16 bucks to get 2000 uh right here you can see they're advertising 10,000 credits which is you can scrub 10,000 email contacts like subscribers for 65 dollars and uh, when you run it through, they do some very nice um, scrubbing. Like they'll check for spam email addresses, known spam email addresses, honeypots. And basically this is just to keep your domain from being blacklisted, especially if you're paying money for a service like Aweber, you don't want your account to be um, knocked down and have bad reputation when sending emails because the whole point of you're paying for all this is you want to have good uh good standing on your ip address so <clears throat> and a lot of paid lists will have honeypots which are known spam email addresses and that will notify them and everyone that uh, you're using a paid list so you don't want to do that so basically what I'll do is I'll go through and rebuild this email and kind of show you what I did from scratch so let me go back and version today it's about 1120 I'll go back to the version at 942 before I made all those changes. That didn't work. Oh, I gotta hit restore. And that's kind of the nitty gritty stuff I wanted to get into, um, was showing you how I built this. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this in a new tab and get into it. So I'm not going to show you the, uh, well, I guess I can. So first off, I took the list that I had, I logged in and ran this small list that I had through. And then once you download your results, it gives you, I ran 765, 342 were valid, 299 were catch all, uh, 45 emails out of there were on the do not mail list. Luckily there was no spam, spam trap or abuse emails and stuff. So once you do that, then you can see, uh, once you download this CSV, it will give you, I will actually pull it up for you so you can see a scrub list folder and it will be separated into these different folders here. So it'll show you which email addresses were abused. This is all results. The catch all are, I'm actually going to include the catch all in this first email send because catch all means these are impossible to validate without sending a real email address and waiting for a bounce. So I don't have like 10 million emails. I'm just sending to like a couple hundred, like 700 some. Uh, it tells us that the email is valid. The term catch all means the email server tells you the email is valid, whether it's valid or invalid. If you want to email these addresses, you can segment them into a catch all group and know that some of these will most likely bounce. So you can duplicate a campaign and send one campaign to the all email addresses and send another e that same email campaign to this catch all group. And because this campaign here is probably going to have a higher bounce rate. And when you're doing emails for yourself or for other people, the whole point is to try and keep that bounce rate down as low as it will go. So here we go. I'm going to pull this down so I can kind of show you how I recreated it. So I'm going to hit create your first email and they have a list of prepared templates. I'm going to go to this all one because I don't know what category it was in. And I think I chose the one that looked like Apple. I know the owner loves Apple products and the way that they brand themselves. And when I saw this template, it kind of reminded me of that. So that's why I went through and chose this template. Um, a lot of times I'll start with just a blank one and just build it from scratch, but this one was already kind of set up. Here it is right here. So I used this one here. It's called promo newsletter. Kind of looks like a, if we preview it, you know, it has this little button, has this computer image. Now, emails are built with tables. So on a website, you could have this image going over these two sections, but in email, you'll see that this top image is the top half of the computer and the bottom half is the bottom half of the computer. So I'll show you how I dealt with that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this one, clicking on it. It's going to open it up. First off, I'm going to say duplicate for learning. And I'm not going to get into setting the email subject or the pre-header. The pre-header is what shows up in the email before you open it. And that would be, this one went to promotions. So it says this is the subject line here. And then this is the pre-header that shows up as this preview text is basically what it is so you can set that here and what that does is it fills in you can fill in white space so just as a note um, see how this email here from hook has this white space 
it doesn't go into the rest of the email. What that is, is special characters, non-breaking spaces are what they call them. So when we set up an email, this is what the pre-header section pulls from. So this is all setting up the document for the email. This is for provisional code for Microsoft Office. Um, this, is, this is why I set up Stripo, Stripo for these people so that they could go in there and make edits if they wanted to on their own. This is the media queries. Um, so that basically if something goes below 600 pixels, all these will come into play. And right after that CSS style area, you end the header section and immediately in the body section, the first words that go into your body are your preheader. And then what this is, is the and symbol, and that means non-breaking space, from what I understand, I think so. But anyways, that puts that extra space after it to make it so that it doesn't go into the beginning of your email, because if that non-breaking space wasn't in there, the rest of the email would start showing up, which would be the next text, which would say view and browser, and then announces coronavirus, depending on what device it is. Some devices show more preview text than others. So back to where I was, I am building this email here for you. So we'll set up the subject in the preheader later. Um, I deleted this little pre-header text here, um, but you can leave it on there. It's kind of good practice to have it. I always delete it. And this little container here is going to show up, but when, if you preview it, you'll see that it's not large on here. That's just a placeholder. So first thing I did was I played with, I clicked on this to replace the logo. Um, and this is where it comes into play that, you know, people say, oh, you can do emails are so easy and stuff like that. You can, but, um, I had a illustrator file from them that had a bunch of different versions of their logo and none of them really looked good. So... Basically, what I had to do was open up their logo in Illustrator and select the text portion and size it up a little bit because this logo here, with there being this much space on this side and this side, because you can see there's that shadow stuff right here. So when I had that extra space, it didn't really look that good so I had to come in here and then basically the easiest way for me to do it I'm sure people might cringe but I copied this and pasted it into this here and you can see these are all my different layers in Photoshop so I had a couple different versions that I was messing with. Those were the larger versions that I didn't like at first. This is the one I ended up going with because it was uh, the size that I wanted. So, but basically what I did was, you know, it came in here, copied it out of Illustrator, hit Command C, copy, whatever, and then went into Photoshop and Command V pasted it as a smart object. They resized it, holding down Alt to keep the, to resize it from the middle. And turn it off, hit Shift, Alt, Command, Save, um, which is basically the same thing as going to Not used to using the new, there it is. Export save for web. 
Command Shift Alt S. It'll bring up this little box, and I did 50% because I want you want images to be smaller, especially for mobile. Um, people's internet and stuff might not be as large, so when you save it for web, it helps reduce the file size a lot. And then I hit save it as a transparent PNG because it's going on a transparent background. Hit save, and that is where I saved it in the logo file for web. There's all my different versions. Dark background, I played with a couple different versions there. Uh, ended up going with that third version there. So just so you can see, horizontal web logo. And I'll do four tests, because this is the test version. And we will go back to Uh, here, and I just saved that new logo in here as the four test. And you'll see, I can place it in there. It's probably going to show up weird. See how it shows up all tiny. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's a responsive image, which uh, there's a class inside of that uh, CSS that makes it responsive which means as you widen and close the screen, as you can see here, you'll see the image, when it gets smaller, the image, the images will shrink with the size of the email. And that's all for the mobile versions to make sure all the different devices when it's on desktop, it all stays the same because it just depends on how wide it is. So when you see the image shrink, that's because you've set that here as a responsive image. And now we can click on it and make it larger to where you think it might look good. Sometimes changing the height makes it go quicker. So I wanted it nice and big to fit in there. And this padding around it, I don't like that. So I'm going to take out the top padding and the bottom padding. And then I actually just use the same text. Mounts. Virus preparedness for field workers. And then I came in here and said traditional clean methods won't cut it. And I think I changed the font to F O F F F. So you can do that here. F O F F F F. Yep. It's just off, a little bluish. And then I change this button to a nice green color because that's the color of their logo. Darker. And I change the font to something a little nicer, made it larger. And I want that button to stand out, made it bold. And the border radius means the round borders. I don't like round buttons. You might like round buttons. I think a square button, more square button looks nicer. Okay, so that's the top part up there. Now, I did take this, and I'll show this to you right now. I wanted the uh, focus to be on the image. So I took, you select this, or just hover over this side area, 
click and drag this button to underneath the image. And then what I did was show you in Photoshop, I took uh, is that it? No, that's not it. Okay, so first off, I found these images and then put their logo on them. Uh, you can see that there. Let me go back into... email campaigns folder here it is I thought maybe I had deleted it so I took this image of the backpack uh, that I had and I think I had this gun cut out the backgrounds and all that won't get into how you do all that but basically this new object selection tool lets you do that fairly easily uh, put the two products on there added this little thing from the website the uh, where they sell this stuff because it's sanitary maintenance and what you'll see is like I said that computer image is half and half so this thing is not wanting to play nicely so I had to take a half image and bottom image. So what I'm going to do is when I brought this in here initially, I basically had saved the computer image, or I uh, right click save the computer image, opened it up, and then edited the canvas size to be a little bit taller, tall enough. Because it doesn't have to be the same exact as the computer, but I just wanted it to go over that background because I thought it looked nice and I wanted to keep that uh, feel for the email. So I turned that off. Um, oh, when I did that, I made another layer and just turned the fill down and put a stroke around it. You can see that little black line just so I would know where it was in case I needed it. Um, but basically, so I turned that off, I added this stuff into the uh, image. So now I need to cut this image in half and keep it. So what I did was hit command and it makes it so you can choose this selection. I selected the top half. So now it's the selecting the top half image crop. And then did the shift command option save or file save for web png because you need it to be transparent i did this 50 percent and hit save and i believe that's in here so you'll see the two different areas there's the top save it as top and I'll just save it again just because we're doing this. Test. Up on test PNG. And then I did an undo. And the easiest way to select the bottom half now is to go to select inverse. So now you'll see the little selection is down at the bottom. Same thing, go to crop. So now I'm cropping the bottom portion of that image. Same thing, command shift alt s. And I'm saving this out at 50%. Uh, hit save. Saving it as, when I click on the file, it automatically updates this save as. Uh, so, one task. Save. And then I'm going to make sure I undo. And what I always do is save. The whole file as the Photoshop file so it doesn't uh, get lost then we can go back and I'll click on this image here 
replace it, upload the images that I just did, which was, this is the top one test. Plop, goes right in there. And now I'll click on this, go to change the image, and do the bottom test, the one that we just saved. And plop, there it is. And that's what she looks like. So that looks pretty nice. I thought it did. Next portion, we're going to. Uh, I added a text box. And I'm just copying it because I don't think you want to sit here and watch me retype everything. Um, let's see. I made this one. Roboto. 21. Oh. 20 and then I made this oh did I really do that okay open stands 23 I don't know why sometimes they don't show up like that and I turned it green dark green and then a lot of times in emails, the only thing you can do is a couple things here. But anyways, I did, it says normal, Roboto 20. And you'll notice that, oops, I want to make it black again. And... I italicize safest and most effective to make it stand out a little bit more with this. And then let's see, we provide Roboto 21 black. Black. And I said electrostatic disinfecting. Now, a lot of times you do not want to underline things because it just makes people think that it's a link, but I did it anyways because I wanted it to stand out. Underline, and then this one would be Open Sans 50. Underline, and it's also italicized, and it's also black. And then the next thing I did was I got rid of this section, so I just hit the garbage can on that, and I went in and made these two images. which were this one and this one. And I changed up the text underneath and saved them both out as JPEGs. Now these images I just got off their website. That's what they were using. So I won't go through that whole Photoshop spiel again um, to save us some sanity. I believe these are going to be in images. And This was the first one, and 
this was the second one. And a little information as far as Write a little blurb here. Same thing here. And then down here, which was fun, I changed this text to wanted sub contracting working together. I wrote a quick little blurb about this. Plumbers, would you like to help us? While we focus on lining, we need certified plumbers to work with us on jobs of all sizes. And then subcontracting. Do you have a job that requires lining or spray in or spray in place pipe rehab? Our services are best paired with a fine plumbing contractor. Because these guys do not do plumbing work. They only do pipe lining, which is a very interesting industry. And working together, no job is too big or too small. If you're interested in learning more about the CIPP or SIPP lining process, give us a shout today. And, uh, I don't really like or understand why Oops. Oh. The head Roboto. What I was saying was this one was going down an extra line, making it uneven, and I did not like that. So when I update these to Roboto, they were the same amount of lines. And then I clicked on this image here, which is pretty cool, which you can do here when you go to change image. They have stock images that they get from Icon Finder or Pixels and stuff. I just searched uh, help, I guess. And I searched and I got this image. When I updated this image, I searched. When I search, I don't even know. Icons contract. Enter, yep, that's that one right there. Then I changed this one and I put. I think I used stock icon together, maybe? No, I did that work there. And which one did I use?
Well, I'm going to use this one because it's still the same thing. Working together. See? Three people working together. All right. Now, I used their regular logo down here because it looked nice. This one. No, it was. This one. And it's going to be teeny tiny. And what we want to do is make it responsive, change the height because it makes it go up faster, and make it big enough to look nice. Check the padding. No padding. Get out of here, padding. And A Weber, uh, you might want to get rid of this stripe down here and hit delete on that because we don't need the stripo footer in there. Um, so a little bit of background on the way that this works is the email builder is built on stripes. And inside of those stripes, there are structures. And inside of those structures, there are containers. So what you'll notice is if I click on this container, the options for this container show up and if I click this here to structure it'll let me change the options for that structure like if I wanted to add padding of the objects of that structure and then you can click here to get to the object of the stripe and you'll be able to uh, play around with like if I wanted to make this background colors. This stripe here uh, is wider and it's got a background image inside of it. So that is how you can navigate all the elements inside of your um, email build. And that's basically how the HTML is built. Like this is the, this is a table and inside of this table there's this table and inside of this table, there's uh, well, inside of this table, the structure table, there's these container tables. And that's where they have all of the content. And that's basically it. I took, since AWeber has um, you set up an email in AWeber, it automatically puts the unsubscribe link in there. So I took out the unsubscribe and left it with view online. Now the view online thing was a little bit difficult for me to do. Uh, I'll show you how to do that once I throw that into it. So what you're looking at here is the fully built email that I just built. I don't like this, so this structure, I'm going to take some of this top padding out. And this bottom. Oh, no, not the button. External padding. So that's the button. This is the padding for the block itself. I just want it to be a little bit tighter. I don't want people to have to scroll to see what they want to see. So, there we are. And what you'll do once you have this is um, make sure that you update all the links to where you want them to go. I wanted everything to go here. So, I'm just going to paste that in there. If anyone clicks on this image, I want them to go there. Always insert alt text. Because a lot of times people will have their images turned off. That's where your email addresses. Learn more button. There. 
this image want to go there, this image I want to go there also. Let's read more link. I want to go there also. Let's read more link. I want to go there also. Oh, I already knew that somehow. That's cool. This read more link. This read more link. This read more link. This logo. And that is. It. You can make the phone number a link. It does it automatically. How about that? It probably does it for the email as well. Um, you can either have it underlined so that people know that it's a link, or you can take that off. I like to take it off if it's a link. Uh, a lot of email clients will find links and change them anyways. So here we go. We're going to change. Um, Oh, that's the code editor. We don't need that. We go into settings, email subject. What do we want to do? This is how we roll hidden characters, pre-header text. This is my pre-header hidden text. So it's hidden because it doesn't show up anywhere in the email, just on that one little area where I told you and we want to add those non-breaking white spaces. Um, actually, I'm going to leave it off so you can see what happens when you don't add that extra hidden code in there. And you'll see it go into the email content. So now I'm going to export it. I always like to do the HTML. You can put it directly into your um, editor if you like. I'm going to set both image sizes set both sizes for images and the exported code. I always select that and then hit export. That's another great thing is Stripe will host the images for you. So I'm going to save this one as duplicate for learning. There's my original one. And then I will go and open this code editor. Whoops. And I am going to click here and I'm going to open our new latest file. Boom. There she is. Make sure she squishes down and goes to the mobile view. Oops. There's the mobile view. Looks great. So now that we have this HTML. Let us go set it up. Inside of Aweber, what we're doing is um, this blog broadcast draft because it, Aweber starts a blog. I haven't used Aweber too much, but it starts a blog and you can send out like for people when they sign up, they'll be able to see like past emails that you've sent as in like a blog. Um, so when you save it directly from Stripe, it goes into these blog broadcast drafts. I'm going to do that with this one, but this one I'll just go into the draft. And if you hit the little arrow on create a message, it brings up either the drag and drop builder, the plain text message, or an HTML editor. I'm going to select the HTML editor for obvious reasons. And this is, I had to click the source button, even though it says it is. Another cool thing about Aweber, which I realized is you can add attachments like uh, MailChimp and other ones. You can't really add an attachment. And an attachment, I think, will probably add like that extra level of, wow, this person's personally emailing me because normally you can't add an attachment. So you can add an attachment, which is cool. So what I'm doing is taking this, command A, command C, copy. And then command A, command V to paste. And we're missing a subject line. So you have to put in the subject line manually here, but I like to have it in here just because this is how we roll. 
if you had it imported it directly, it would have put that in there. You can personalize like, you know, this is how we roll. First name. It puts that little thing in there. That's exactly how we're going to fix the uh, source right now. This view and browser button. So what I'm going to do is go to personalize your snippets archived web version and it puts this code here and it took me a little bit but I believe that the correct way to do this is by copying that and adding a link and this is the display text and as soon as you paste that in there it changes that protocol to other and that's what you have to set it up as with their code. And it won't work in test emails. It only works because it publishes it when you send the actual email. So I'm going to do that same thing here. And the URL is going to be the archive URL. And that's going to dynamically put that information in there. So everything is set up. Let us preview and save and exit. And we're in the draft. This is how we roll first name. I'm going to send a test. I'm going to personalize it to Mark Kologi. And let's send it to Mark Media Productions at gmail.com. And we're going to send a test. And see if I got it. Look, there it is. This is how we roll, Mark. And you'll see that I didn't hide, put in that extra non-breaking space. So it says, this is my pre-header hidden text, view and browser, logo announcement, coronavirus, because in the email it says, view and browser, right there, and what does it say? This is my pre-header, hidden text, that's what I wrote. And then it says view and browser, logo announcement. Oh, it says logo because that's the uh, alternate text for that. And then it says announcement, coronavirus preparedness because it says announcement. So you see the pre-header when you don't put that extra non-breaking space code in there, it just goes straight into the email content. That's why I left it in there. And this little first name tag here in the subject line brought in my first name this is how we roll mark this is my pre-header hidden text blah 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 open it up see what it looks like looks great uh, pretty cool pretty nice little email setup and I don't know if we can do this or not let's see if we can inspect this and see what it looks like on a mobile. I don't know if Gmail will let us do that. It's trying to get me to get the app. Huh. Okay. Maybe it will show us. There it is. This is the mobile version. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So, according to an iPhone 6, 7, 8 Plus... Uh oh, I didn't mean to do that. 
Uh, I want to move this onto the side. This is what it looks like. You, know, you have to click and drag like you're actually on a phone. So this is an iPhone whatever and it's not actually showing you correctly what it looks like because it's still keeping these in two columns which it's not going to actually do that on your phone and I can guarantee it because I looked at it on my phone let's try if we switch to a what do we want to do what do they have on here Galaxy S5 is all they have. Sweet. And you always got to refresh. That is not how it looks on my phone. Horrible example. Guys, horrible example. Um, let me see. Stripo gives you a preview I don't know if there's any free so I have two out of two tests with this account that I have uh, this uses email on acid some people use email on acid or litmus to test their emails let's go ahead and use one because why not this will actually show you what this does is um, email on acid or litmus or some of the other ones they have all these computers and stuff set up or phones devices set up to um, it will send the email to that device and then it'll take a screenshot of it on that device and then upload it here which is pretty cool And as you can see, it works really fast. But see, these are what I was talking about, all the different devices, applications, web. Um, and hopefully sometime today, we'll be able to see what the tests look like. Look, there's even more. This is only 52 of 88 that they provide. But you'll see there's a lot more here. Chrome on Windows. Outlook for Firefox, blah, everything. They got everything. It's just taking it a while to generate all the previews. Failed. Failed. <clears throat> A lot of times these screenshots when I was using litmus would they would take the screenshot too soon and you'd see part of the email missing and you just have to run the test again. It's not something that happened to the email, it's just when it was running through here and taking the screenshots, it was uh I've never done it using email on acid, but I don't have litmus anymore since I don't work for that other place. The litmus and email and acid, that's pretty expensive. Let's see what email and acid is. 
a free seven day trial. Uh, pricing. Hundred and twelve per month. Seventy three per month. I don't care about all that other stuff. So you can get it for seventy three dollars a month. And if you're sending out a lot of emails or doing this for someone else or plan on doing it for someone else, because email is a whole new and this is not working. This is definitely not working. Well, anyways, uh, I wish I could show you what it looks like on my cell phone. But, uh, I mean, that's the whole point of using Stripe and all that to make sure and make it easy to make mobile versions and desktop versions without knowing too much coding. And, uh, but that's basically it. That's, uh, get a link to this and post it up in the video but uh that's basically it when you have um an email campaign i think we spent yearly i believe we spent about four hundred dollars for a whole year Plus the 16 for the email scrubber, but you don't really need an email scrubber. Uh, so, AWeber, we got tier 2, which was 300 a year, 314 a year. Stripe O is 125 a year. And that adds up to $439 a year, which is not bad. Um, plus you get free trials on those. Man, this is horrible. Not one of them working. Well, not good for Stripo as a selling point. Well, anyways, that's it. If you have any questions or you want to see anything in more depth or however it is, um, feel free to uh, email me or comment here. Comment here. Bye.